Okay, so welcome everyone to the Manitoba Museum. My name is Corinne. We're so excited to kick off our holidays at home with you today. Uh, we have two giant weeks of free programming thanks to Travel Manitoba. And our adventure starts with me, Corinne, um, on Little Narwhal's adventure. And so before we begin, here's Little Narwhal. This is my friend. Um, we found him here in the museum hanging around. He's pretty magical. He likes to transport himself through time as well as through all the waterways here at the museum. And so we're going to learn about some of Narwhal's friends today. But before we learn, talk about his friends, I want to introduce you to Little Narwhal. Now, the reason we call Little Narwhal Little Narwhal is because he is very small. A real Narwhal in real life would be as big as a school bus. So as you can see, he's pretty tiny. The other cool thing about Little Narwhal is he has a nickname, the Unicorn of the Sea. And that's thanks to this tusk right here. And so this tusk is not something, it's, it's not something strange. It's not a horn, it's actually a tooth. And the funny thing is only boy Narwhals get this tusk tooth that goes through their lips and out uh, through the front of their nose. Um, but the funny thing is, is narwhals don't have any teeth. So this tusk tooth is one of the few and only teeth that they might have. And it's only the boys that get it. Sometimes boys are lucky and they get two teeth. And so that is another cool fact about little narwhal. Now, the other reason I call little narwhal little is because little narwhal is little. He's a little kid, just like some of you that are watching. And we know this because of the coloring on his back. So when narwhals are born, they're blue gray, and then they turn into a blue, a blue black with little started spots. And as they grow older, and as you can see, narwhal is slowly becoming a teenager. We're getting that gray uh, belly, and eventually he'll be gray with all those molted spots. And eventually, as they get really old, sometimes they can become all white. So that's another reason why I nickname my friend narwhal Little Narwhal. Now, we're going to go on an adventure and we're going to go see things that um, Narwhal has some of his friends that he likes to play with here in the museum. And we're going to try to look at some of their cool adaptations, especially their teeth, because Narwhal has a really cool tusk tooth. So let's go visit one of his friends. For this, we're going to need a uh, little Narwhal to transport us back to the time of the dinosaurs. But of course, we're not going to see any dinosaurs because dinosaurs don't know how to swim. But his friend, Petey Jr., the Pliosaur, does. So follow me, boys and girls. We're going to need, if you, guys have, if you guys have any questions, I hope that you will ask me in the chat. For those of you who are watching live on Facebook, uh, just remember, put those questions early in the chat. You guys are about a minute behind us. So I want to make sure you get your questions nice and early. So up with his tooth tusk to Petey Jr. Don't be afraid, PD Jr. is only about seven years old. He looks a bit scary, but this is a pliosaur. And him and little Narwhal have lots of fun. And the reason they have so much fun is you can see his little flippers and you can see the little bones that help him swim. Now, PD the pliosaur lived about 65 million years ago, uh, back when the dinosaurs existed. And I actually think this one here in particular, Peter Jr., actually lived a long, long time ago, about 90 million years ago, but pliosaurs were around, around the time of the dinosaurs. So the pliosaur is not a dinosaur. As cool as he is, he is actually a marine reptile, something that lived with the dinosaurs. And when we found Petey, well, we didn't find him intact. We found him as a fossil. So I'm gonna get you guys to turn over here and look at my wonderful table. Over here, I'm going to explain what a fossil is. So a fossil is a bone of something that existed long, long ago, but it's nice and heavy and it's turned into a rock. And so fossils, what happens is when animals like Petey Jr. here um, disappear or, or, or um, you know, met their end, um, they will float to the bottom of the sea, just like in this tub here and their bones will be buried under the sand. Also things like shell creatures, like a cephalopod from sometime even earlier than the dinosaurs, those would get buried under the sand and protected. 
And so over time, the sand and the calcium and the bones and in the shells, under pressure, these two things would mix together and form a rock. But it's not just any rock. A fossil shows us that there was evidence of something that lived long, long ago. Isn't that right, Norwell? Awesome. So here at the museum, we collect lots of fossils. You'll see some beautiful fossils from creatures, from fishes. Um, and of course, PD Jr. is a pretty cool fossil. Now, the other cool thing is we sometimes collect things like dinosaur eggs. And my particular favorite, a copolite, dinosaur poop. Um, so this is a rock that used to be dinosaur poop. So this is a pretty cool fossil. Now, my friend, Dr. Graham Young, who works here, he's a paleontologist, and he's the one who gets to go and get all dirty, digging around, looking for these things. And when he goes and finds them, you know, Petey Jr. doesn't show up just like this. This is something we had to create. We had to make him look like this so you could imagine what he might look like. Now, if you guys want to come and see how Miss Dr. Graham Young found him, he found him with his friend Wayne, and they found Petey Jr. like this. Now, this is a little harder for us to imagine what Petey might look like. That is why we copied all of his fossil bones and we took them. Sometimes we had to make up some because they were missing. So we had to copy them uh, from another bone and we blew all these bones up like a balloon. And that is how we get Petey Jr. floating on the ceiling. Um, and he's one of Narwhal's favorite friends. Now, let's go back to see Petey Jr.'s teeth uh, because you know what? Narwhal really likes teeth because he only has one. And teeth are really important to animals. And so, Petey Jr., when you look at those sharp, pointy teeth, Petey Jr. doesn't have the things we have today. He doesn't have things like forks and knives to cut his food. And he really likes to, to chew his food properly. So he needs those big, sharp teeth to rip his food apart. So he chews it carefully and can swallow it without uh, having it be too big. So those teeth, while they look scary, are very important to my friend PD Jr. Um, so that he doesn't hurt himself eating and his mom doesn't have to give him the hind leg at the dinner table. So that is PD Jr. Next, Narwhal wants to take you at home. Oh, from Facebook, does a girl oh, Narwhal have a tusk tooth too? Um, so that is a very good Facebook question, and I love that you asked that. Um, so it has been shown that some girl, some female narwhals can get a tusk tooth, but not as often as boys. It's usually the boys that have them. So that is a very good question. Now Narwhal wants to take us to where he's from. And so Narwhal has traveled the world and also throughout our museum but he really likes to hang out in the Hudson's Bay in the cold waters of the Arctic. So let's go visit some of his friends who live in the Arctic. Oh, this is one that Narwhal wants to stay far away from. As much as he loves the polar bear and watching him, um, Narwhal stays away because sometimes polar bears get hungry and little Narwhal makes a perfect snack because he's so little. Um, but this polar bear is a very good swimmer. He's got those front paws uh, that help him swim. And he, oh my goodness, when he goes swimming, I'll show you how he goes swimming. Some of you have, who have taken swimming lessons, you guys have, might have done this before. You guys might have learned what we call the doggy paddle. And so when a polar bear goes in the water, he uses his front paws and paddles and his back paws are like a rudder and helps him steer in the direction he wants to go. And the other cool thing is when we go take a look at our polar bear in a few minutes, he's got these really big nostrils. And I don't know about you, but when I jump in the water, I have to plug my nose. But the polar bear, on the other hand, dives in. Those big nostrils actually 
invisible flap that cools themselves up so that he can go underwater and he doesn't swallow water up through his nose. Uh, so that's really cool. The other fun thing, I'm gonna get my friend Mike to just stay right there. Polar bear is hanging out in the dark. The other really good thing is polar bears have thick fur like this, um, so that when they are swimming, they um, this keeps them nice and warm, even in the cold Arctic waters. And just like narwhal, narwhal has a little bit of fur on its back because they are both mammals. And so fur keeps these animals warm while they're swimming. Now I have one more thing to show you about the polar bear. And that, that was his sharp pointy teeth. I'm not sure if we're gonna be able to get back to the polar bear at daytime. He's gonna come up in just a minute from what I can see. We'll see if there's any far questions. Oh, I have a question while we wait for our polar bear. How far do narwhals, how far south do narwhals swim? Um, so they tend to go into the Hudson's Bay um, and they tend to go fairly in the north part. Um, so Hudson's Bay is probably as south as they go and they're probably in the northern tip of Nunavut, uh, probably higher than um, um, Inlet um, is, I think this is the town. So they tend to be in that area. And so the polar bear has sharp pointy teeth, um, just like Narwhal who likes to eat squids and halibut and cod. And um, also, uh, what's the other thing he likes? Oh, he loves to eat shrimp. He likes to eat all the same seafood as me. The polar bear has sharp pointy teeth because he is also a carnivore and likes to eat meat. In this case, he's eating my friend, the seal. And so eating food is very important to all of us. We eat food to get us big and strong, and that's exactly what the polar bear is doing. Um, do narwhal, oh yeah, so we just talked about narwhal's favorite food. Um, you know what, we're gonna go on an adventure, so how about we all try the doggy paddle, like the polar bear. We're gonna doggy paddle all the way to our next animal friend that narwhal is bringing us to that lives in, along the Hudson's Bay coast. Oh, I got a great question about how fast do narwhals swim? Um, so they can swim pretty fast, depending where they're going. Um, not as fast as a car, but faster than we can walk at about 10 kilometers an hour, sometimes a little faster. Now, another animal that my friend narwhal loves to see when he's hanging out along the Hudson's Bay over there, you can see it in the background, is the caribou. Now, caribous, we're not gonna really talk about how they swim because Narwhal doesn't really go swimming with the caribou all that much. Um, they like to walk along the rocks, but um, Narwhal likes to watch them as they walk along the Hudson's Bay shore and they travel together, um, Narwhal in the water and uh, the caribou on land. But what Narwhal really likes about these caribou is the fact that he likes to watch how humans interact with the caribou. Now us humans, especially the people who live in the north, the Inuit, the Padlamate Inuit who live along the shores of the Hudson Bay, um, this is one of their important food source. They also go hunting marine animals like whales and seals, but this is one of their main foods. And Narval really appreciates the fact that the Inuit, um, the Padlamate don't waste anything. They use all of the caribou if they do hunt it. Um, so while they'll use the meat for food, they will use the antlers and their bones um, for other things. Now I'm gonna show you something that they make with fur. So follow me over here. Oh, and so over here we have a really cool jacket made out of caribou fur to keep us nice and warm. This is a little girl's jacket. Um, so it's very pretty and it's very warm. And so that's something that they can make with the fur from a caribou. The other fun thing is that they would make tools like fishing, uh, fishing lines, um, hunting tools to keep them uh, to go get some more food, but also they can make fun toys like this. So here's just a little bone from a caribou and then they make what you call ring the pin. And this is a fun Inuit game that kids and adults would have to put 
the bone onto the stick. Now it's a challenge, probably more challenging than any video game you have, but this would make you a really good hunter for your hand-eye coordination. So if you play any sports like baseball or golf or hockey, you really need that hand-eye coordination. And so this is how people got really good. And let's go to our next adventure. Um, we're actually going to go see one of the caribou's cousins. Oh, I'm going to keep it as a surprise. So we're going to go visit the caribou's cousin, and we're going to go see how good of a swimmer he is. This is going to shock you that this next animal is super, super, super uh, great swimmer. And then somebody else, uh, the person who asked about uh, how, fa how fast can narwhal swim, um, so the actual really, I knew it was, wasn't quite much more than 10 kilometers. It's actually, um, they can swim about 160 kilometers per day and they can actually travel 6.5 kilometers per hour. So here we go. We're gonna go into the boreal forest, someplace a little warm. I wonder if there's gonna be any water nearby for little narwhal. There must be, this guy is a really good swimmer. Oh, I spot him. Anybody know what animal this is? Can anybody tell me in the chat what animal you spot here? Oh, we got some great answers. People know it. It's the moose. Now, me telling you that the moose is an excellent swimmer is that surprising to you guys because that was surprising to me when little narwhal told me now the moose he not only a really good swimmer he's got those long legs to swim kind of like a backstroke to get him really far but now my question is is where does he does do all his swimming well he likes to go swimming in lakes but there's also these waterways called bogs that he likes to go swimming in it. And the bog is probably his favorite one because there's nice delicious food in the bog. And so for that, not only does my friend the moose have to be a really good swimmer, he has to be a good diver. And so normal will demonstrate that we dive and we go to the bottom of the bog to catch our food. Now this moose can actually dive as far down as tall as a giraffe is. So that's like almost three times his height or two and a half times his height. So that means he can dive pretty deep and it's his head grabbing the food. So that's really important. Now, because we're here and because I know a lot of you are a lot of little ones, uh, Narwhal invited my other friend, Fred the Moose. And we're gonna sing a song about Fred the Moose. And so this is a repeat after me song. And so I hope at home you guys will join us and sing about a moose, this one in particular. Are you guys ready? So all you have to do is repeat after me. So there was a great big moose. There was a great big moose. He liked to drink a lot of juice. He liked to drink a lot of juice. There was a great big moose. There was a great big moose. He liked to drink a lot of juice. He liked to drink a lot of juice. Singing no way out. Singing oh way 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 oh singing way oh way oh singing way oh 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 the moose's name was Fred name was Fred he liked to drink his juice in bed he liked to drink his juice in bed the moose's name was Fred moose's name was Fred he liked to drink his juice in bed liked to drink his juice in bed singing oh way oh singing oh way oh he drank his juice with care. He drank his juice with care. But he spilt it everywhere. But he spilt it everywhere. He drank his juice with care. He drank his juice with care. But he spilt it everywhere. But he spilt it everywhere. Singing oh way oh. Singing oh way 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 oh singing oh way 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 oh. There's a moose on the moose drinking juice. 
We better keep our juice safely in our fridges. Now, that is really important. But I want to talk about something else about this moose. As you can see, the moose has really, really big antlers. And you know what? Just like the moose and my friend Narwhal, that's something they have in common. Because antlers really show off that my friend the moose over here is really healthy. That means he's making good, healthy choices and eating his food, but also he can find food for his family. So there's this baby and his, his lovely, the mom. And so the male moose has these beautiful antlers. I'm gonna put this down here to show off how big and strong and how he can find food. And so the narwhal tusk is kind of the same idea. So when a narwhal has a tooth tusk, it means, and it's really long, and it could be almost as long as half of his body. And as you can see, the little narwhal has a very healthy tusk. It's almost as big as his whole body. This means the narwhal is able to find food and stays big and strong. And that's gonna make sure that his family knows that they can find, he'll be able to find food for them. So that's really important. Now the next animal we're gonna go see, also a really good swimmer, and probably one of my cutest little ones that we're gonna see, follow me. Oh, can anybody tell me about or what is his name? Who is he? There we go. We've got a couple of people who already recognize him as a beaver. Now beavers are super cool. Um, they tend to go all out. Um, I really like, they really love swimming. So much so that if you come over here, not only do they build their house with a secret entrance that they have to swim up to, but they sometimes kind of build their own swimming pool. They'll build the dam over here. And so the water will get nice and high from the creek or the river. And so this is, gives them their very own swimming pool. And the reason they love swimming pools so much is well because they've got the tools to swim. So he's got these webbed feet back here that really help him paddle along and push himself um, through the waters. He's got this giant tail that acts like a rudder. And so that tail can help push him and swim faster and dive deep. And as you can see, he is diving, probably going to uh, go and add something to his home or his dam so he can swimming pool stay. And so the other thing that this beaver has is this shiny coat. Just like the polar bear, um, these animals have uh, fur that helps them swim in the water and dry up very, very quickly. We're gonna get back to their furs because their furs are also good for something else. But I really wanna talk to you about my friend, the beaver. And oh, Norwell's pointing out, I was gonna talk about something else, but Norwell's pointing out his teeth. And you know what, Norwell really loves to talk beaver's teeth. So we talked a little bit about how some animals have sharp pointy teeth, the polar bear, the plesiosaur, and made them, that makes them carnivores. Now over here, we have some beaver's teeth, just like that. We have a beaver skull. I'm going to open it up so we can see these flat teeth right here. And those are flat. And that's because a beaver doesn't need sharp pointy teeth to eat his food. He's a plant eater. And so the plant eaters have flat teeth. But what's really, really, really cool is these front teeth right here. Now these teeth right here are very important. These are his working teeth. Now the beaver works really hard. He has to cut down all those trees uh, to make his uh, lodge, but also the dam. So he has that cool swimming pool to swim in. And so these teeth 
are very important tools and the beaver has to take very good care of them. And the really cool thing about these front teeth is that they're like our fingernails. They're always growing. So the beaver has to, like us, we have to trim our nails. The beaver has to file his teeth down. And so the way he does that is sometimes he'll come to a tree and he'll start chewing on the bark of the tree. And that's how he's filing down his tree, uh, his teeth. And that's really important because if the beaver doesn't do that, the teeth will continue to grow and grow and grow. And we have an example over here of a poor beaver who didn't take care of her teeth. And so here we have her poor teeth that continue to grow, grow, grow. And eventually that's really painful for a beaver because now the beaver can't close its jaw or eat its food. And so this is very important that poor beaver be hand fed and that's not good for beavers either because now humans have to step in and beavers know how to take care of themselves now oh we have a question oh they have yellow teeth hmm you know i said they had yellow teeth but i have actually never actually learned to why they had yellow teeth so that's a really good question. Now I'll go and learn something new. So hopefully, um, if I'm gonna go after this program, I'm gonna go find out why their teeth are yellow compared to their other teeth that are nice and white, kind of like ours. I'm wondering if that's just because they might have to have something to protect them a little bit more because they're, they're working teeth. Um, so there we go. We're gonna go to one last thing. But before I left, I said something along the lines of my beaver friend has a really cool fur. And you know what? Us humans, we thought it was a really cool fur too. So much so that we made some cool hats with these beaver felts. And it actually started uh, an empire called the Hudson's Bay Company. People were looking for cool, fancy hats like this. And they decided to use beaver felts. So they'd take the beaver fur, stretch it out, and make these cool waterproof hats, which is really important on rainy days. So we're going to take one last look at something that swims in the water that Narwa loves to see, as long as he doesn't see too many of them, because sometimes they get in his way. But a long, long time ago, there was a company that had a giant ship just like this. And it sailed all the way into the Hudson's Bay. This is it actually in London, England. We've been transported back in time to some place. Narwhal followed it along from its adventures in the Hudson's Bay and when it came back to England. And this ship started a fur trading company to make some beautiful hats called the Hudson's Bay Company. Now, we're not gonna kind of end our adventure here, but I promise you our holidays at home, this is just the startup. And so on New Year's Day, if you want to go aboard the ship, my friend Shana is going to take you aboard and show you all the parts of the ship, including down below, because that is one of our holiday traditions. We have so many things happening over the next two weeks. We have lots of planetarium stuff happening in the evening, uh, a planetarium show. We have a behind the scenes with and as well as we have a video on demand that you can log on to, watch it, and there's a cool scavenger hunt that you can also join in on. And so I hope you'll take the time to do all those things and answer because there are some really cool prizes. Now, what I'm gonna do here, I think we have a few more minutes. I did see a couple of pictures. Um, and so, oh, and my friend, Ashley, who is watching today, uh, sent me a copy of the Why Are the Teeth Yellow? And I was kind of right that they had a special protective um, coating. It's very iron rich and it just protects their enamel on their teeth. So it's kind of right, but now she helped me prove it because, you know, I don't want to leave any in misleading information. Um, and I'm just checking to see if anyone in the Facebook world had any questions. Um, So um, somebody wants to know if caribou or Norwell lose their horns or teeth. So I'm going to talk about the caribou because the caribou are really cool. And caribou are the only deer family where both boys and girls get antlers. So like Norwell, usually it's only boys that get antlers or sorry, a tooth tusk. Uh, the caribou 
both boys and girls get their antlers, but they get them at different times of the year. And so the boys or the males will get their, um, right now they are all losing their antlers um, because they are making sure their families have enough food. So they lose their antlers so that they have lots of calcium instead of making the antlers, they lose them so that their bodies can help them survive the winter and make sure their families have lots of food. And the females get them, but lose them as soon as they have a baby and they have to make milk for their babies. Um, so that's really interesting that yes, they do lose their antlers. Same with the moose, the moose will lose his antlers and every year he'll grow new ones. I'm not sure about my friend Narwhal if he loses his tooth tusk and it regrows every year. I can't remember that fact, Narwhal. He's still pretty young, so he doesn't know if he'll lose it yet. It's kind of like a baby tusk tooth right now. So hopefully we'll figure that out. And I'm just gonna check to see if there are any other questions. <gasps> what is Narwhal's Christmas wish? <gasps> oh, he's just hoping that Santa doesn't get quarantined and uh, he actually gets a present. Uh, but really he on his wish list was uh, some squid, some calamari. I agree, that's a really good wish. Um, anything else? Just gonna, um, oh, and you know what? Um, somebody has made a request that they would like to mic next time to sing in the repeat after me song. You guys just couldn't hear him on my microphone. He did actually participate. So, you know, just, just to let you know, my, my speakers just couldn't catch on to my wonderful friend, Mike, who's helping me out. Um, so thank you so much for joining us at Holidays at Home. Uh, for Little Narwhal's Adventure. We are so happy that you guys could join us and kickstart off our two weeks of fun, free programming, thanks to Travel Manitoba. And Narwhal has one more thing to say to you guys. Happy Narwhal days. So we'll see you soon, and hopefully you'll be able to visit us in the new year.